we're talking about money, 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 money. Everybody's got to have money. And today we are talking about Costa Rica money. We're talking about banking in Costa Rica. And we're talking about what happens about the ATMs in Costa Rica. So today we're going to be answering all of those questions. Now, just to let you know what is happening before I get started, let me stop this right here. Hold on a second. a professional website that's sure to get you noticed. All right, sorry about that. I had to stop this, uh, my computer. Anyway, let's get into it. So um, if this is your first time seeing us, I want you to, I want to welcome you to our Living in Costa Rica Live today as we're talking about banking. Hey, I'm your host, Alan, and this is my beautiful co-host, Rebecca. And today we are going to be talking about and having a lot of fun about banking, banking in Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. So let me tell you real quick what's going to happen. We're gonna to talk today all about our banking experiences, share our perspective, and we're gonna go about 30 to 40 minutes because we've learned when the replay goes up, people, when they see it's more than 30 minutes, they tend not to watch, and we wanna help everybody. So we're gonna end about 30 or 40 minutes. We must stop before 1.45, because at 1.45, we're gonna do a live Q&A where we answer all of your questions. So if you're watching this recording, hey, make sure that you click the link so that you can go to the Q&A and find out all about the questions and answers that have been asked about banking, money, ATMs in Costa Rica. Now, before we do get started, uh, let me remind you that you know, we're doing this because we've had a lot of questions uh, from on YouTube, all of our subscribers, people asking questions, people at the forum asking about Hey, what's required to open a bank account in Costa Rica? Uh, what's the exchange rate? And so you're welcome to come join our forum. There's lots of areas in the forum that are free. However, there are premium areas where, hey, it's 33 cents a day. And we don't have a Patreon account, you know. Um, and, you know, with a Patreon account, it's great. You support the people that you love for the content. However, we want to give you value. We want to give back more than you're giving to us. And so at 33 cents a day, hey, that's $10 a day. And we greatly appreciate Oh, ten dollars a month. Oh, that'd be a lot, huh? Okay, at ten dollars a month. But you know, we want to give back to you. And hey, the form is new, so the more that's in there, and the more that uh, are adding to it, the more valuable it becomes. So we want to encourage you to join the forum at forum.cloudforestchapel.com so that you can be a part of that forum. All right, so Rebecca, let's get into it. Yes, welcome. To Costa Rica in 2021. That's right. And look, um, it's a rainy day. So. It's, <laughs> it's raining. So, hey, we can only apologize if you hear all of the background noise that, that may sound like a hum. It's raining. We're at one of our favorite restaurants that serves the best tilapia in the world, okay? So, if you happen to be in this area, you want to stop in San Isidro and, and eat at this restaurant. So, great. Anyway, uh, so that's way, at least you know where we're at, and if you hear the background noise, you know why. Okay, we're talking about banking, and uh, probably one of the biggest questions that people ask or talk about is, hey, you know, understanding the money, okay? So let's just real quick, we'll take a look at it. When we first came to Costa Rica, the exchange rate was 500 clonas to $1, okay? so. You can really say, you know, for quick, easy, or approximate value, you can say, okay, that's two to one. In other words, this is a thousand mil note, okay? And at that thousand mil note, well, what is its value? Well, two to one, you just multiply that by two and say, okay, 1,000 is equal to two dollars, okay? Now remember, they don't say a thousand mil, they say un mil. That's right. So, you know, once you're here, they say un mil, which just means one meal they don't say a thousand colonas right. and a quick way that i do is i just look at it as um i take the zeros off take the three zeros off that means it's a one and then i multiply it by two so it comes out to it two dollars <laughs> that's a quick easy way to do it so hey take the zeros off of that bad boy right there and two dollars all or two meal immediately means four dollars all right here's the test you didn't know there was a test all right, that's five mil. You tell me in the comments, what is five mil worth in United States money? All right, there you go. 
it's ten dollars real easy right but hey you know when we first got here it seemed to be quite confusing uh whenever you would go to the restaurant and then you would see you know something on the restaurant it's five thousand clonas and you're like well five thousand what is that okay well five thousand that's about ten bucks for that particular dish okay and so there's a ten thousand meal note right there obviously worth 20 bucks and there's your a 20,000. Now that's the new ones that have just come out and that 20,000 is worth about 40 bucks, okay? Now that just kind of gives you a quick look at money so that you get an idea. And you know they got tons of coins like everything, but the one that we want to talk about really is this 500 uh clonus. So if you want to look at the perspective, there's 500 clonus, okay? And uh 500 clones is about one dollar so you're carrying a dollar note and that's a quarter in comparison just so you have an idea right but anyway that just has you an idea so that you know what you're spending okay so that kind of makes it a little bit easier for you because when we first came like i said it was 500 clones to the dollar and now it's about 600 650 to the dollar but it's important to note that when you're in Costa Rica, always, 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 when you pay for anything, always pay for everything in colonas and not in American money. Because it's important to note that, hey, in Costa Rica, they do take American money. You, you can pay for everything in your U.S. dollars. However, almost every time... However... Almost every time that you pay in American dollars, you're going to probably lose money, okay? Uh, and it's not gonna be intentional. Here's what you wanna think about. When they will accept the American money, but when you go somewhere and you pay in American money, they're immediately gonna have to convert it, which means they're gonna either have to break out a calculator, but they're not gonna know what the current exchange rate is. and because it's usually about 500 to one, then they're gonna exchange it at 500 to one, and then you're gonna lose money. So, you're, unless now. Yeah, and, and that's usually at places like street vendors or little sodas, you know, places that don't have um, the cash registers that are programmed. programmed with, you know, they, they do the conversion. You give them your debit card, give them your US credit card, and, and it just, it gives you, it charges you the right amount. And that's what I usually experience, like in grocery stores and so forth. Um, you know, no problem. That's right. But if you um, go into a little street vendor, you know, you, you want to pay with Columbus. Yeah. You know, it's, um, there's not very many grocery stores that actually are programmed. And you'll know, you go to the grocery store, you can actually see the screen and you can see that, hey, it's gonna be 10,000 colonas, or if you're paying in cash, it's gonna be 8,831, whatever that conversion rate is, you know, $8. So anyway, the important thing to note is most places don't have that software in their cash registers. So it's always, that you don't lose money in that conversion process. It's not an intentional thing, but you'll save money every single time by paying in clonus. Uh, another note that is, if you're paying in clonus or, you know, let's say you're gonna pay in cash, there's a lot of times that if you go somewhere and, you know, you have the option to pay with your credit card, your debit card, or if you have the option to pay in cash, clonus, Ask them. A lot of times you will save money by paying in cash. They will give you a discount and you can save money by paying in cash, especially if it's a large purchase. Right, because it costs them money to use the credit card, debit card system and that gets passed on to the customer. So if they don't have to use uh, the credit card system and you pay in cash, you get a, a different rate for, like there's the cash price and then there's the credit card or debit card that's price. right it's just common sense because it it does cost a lot of money and it's unfortunate but it does cost a lot of money to use that credit card machine yeah. however now, now, that's not common like at a grocery store you know we're talking more like that like we're talking about the small places yeah and, and things like that now the thing to keep in mind though is that hey you want to always always have cash or clones on hand and why is that because not every place accepts a credit card or debit card 
some places, uh, especially little restaurants in the touristy areas, um, they'll have a sign when you walk in. Look for it before you <laughs> before you order. Check, make sure you have um, some cash on you and look for the sign if they only accept cash. That's right. Because, you know, not only that some places don't accept the credit card, even if they do accept the credit card, I don't know how many times we've gone in and it's like, oh, the credit card machine's broken mm -hmm. or the lot. internet's down so they can't use it or the electricity's down. And, you know, so if you always have cash, then you're not in this situation where you got to like, okay, uh, you can keep my wife as hostage while I go to the ATM machine and get out some money to pay for my food. Right. Okay. <laughs> and there's usually an ATM machine, especially in touristy places. There's yeah. ATM machines all over. That's right. So that's things to keep in mind. So uh, I think that's really everything as far as the money is concerned. The big question, Rebecca, people say, well, if I'm coming to live in Costa Rica, do I have to have a bank account? No, you don't have to have a bank account. In fact, we can share what we're doing right now. Although we have, you know, I have a checking account, a Costa Rican checking account, but um, I don't really use it because Every place that I go to takes my debit cord or a credit cord. And so then, you know, I have my receipt. I don't have to carry a lot of cash. Uh, but, and when I do need cash, I just go to the ATM, put in my debit or credit card, and withdraw cash. Um, I guess that would be different for uh, if I had a bank, if I was using a, a U.S. bank that had hefty fees, international fees, but my banking, my bank doesn't have um, high international fees. They, it's, it's very minimal. That's right. So um, when I go to withdraw cash, uh, get Coronas out, and I just operate like that. Yeah. You know, uh, a quick note is that obviously it's going to depend on your bank. You know, I bank with Navy Federal because I'm a veteran, and so I almost never have to pay any, any type of ATM fees, and a lot of times if I'm charging ATM fee, Navy Federal will actually reimburse me for that, okay? So check with your bank, okay? Uh, a real important uh, note is that when you go to the ATM machine, uh, most ATMs, uh, unless you're in a very small rural area, does have the option to select English or Spanish, okay? And so you can, you know, read and follow along in English so that you can withdraw your money. Now, not every ATM will give the option to withdraw cash, USD, American money, and Kelowna's. Right. Some banks only allow you to withdraw Kelowna's. That's right. So if you experience that and you wanted U.S. dollars, try another, another branch. Go to a different bank. ATM. Yeah. Different okay. ATM. Um, also, something about the, um, the ATMs is here in Costa Rica is they have a limit uh, as to the amount that you can withdraw at a time. You know, um, just for for uh, calculation purposes, let's say your ATM limit in the U.S. is $1,000. Well, a lot of the ATMs here, the limit is $250 at a time. Some of them are up to $500 at a time. So that would be like 250,000 Kelowna limit. A, a couple of times I've seen 300,000. And it really just depends on the bank because there was one time, who knows why, but uh, one bank yeah. limited it down to $100 every time. And so you would withdraw well, that limited, $100. They limited it to 100,000 colonials. Well, no, uh, that one bank, Bank of Costa Rica, limited it to where we could only withdraw about 50,000 colonials, which was the equivalent of 100 oh, okay. bucks. Remember that? Mm -hmm. and, and that only lasted for a short time. Who knows why that yeah, happened? What's going on? Things are always changing, so it's important to know that, okay? Yeah. And the thing to remember, what I, what I was getting at with that is, they limit per withdrawal. However, you can do it, you can do several withdrawals. That's so right. So if you're wanting to get $1,000, then just make, you, know, you might have to make more than withdrawal, which means that you're having to pay more ATM fees, right. and maybe that's the purpose. I don't know what the purpose is, but... It's a slight inconvenience, and if you're not expecting it, I know the first time I was like, oh, well, I needed $500, and they only let me take out 200 well, I just had to do it, you know, a couple more times. So I had to go 
inside the bank to find that out. <laughs> yeah. So you do want to make sure that you, uh, you know, there are ways around it, but it, it's a little bit inconvenient that you may have to go from bank to bank to get that money out. And depending on the bank, it's going to be different fees. Um, but I'm, I'm operating just fine um, not having a Costa Rican bank account. Now, it is um, convenient depending on where you're living. Um, like if you're renting and you have to pay water and electricity, it's really convenient to have a Costa Rican bank account that you can just go online and pay your water, your electricity, and even your rent. That's right. Um, you know, it's to be able to pay- And you can pay, pay Chamo and, that's and all right. of those things online. You know, I'm a little bit of a high tech nerd if you hadn't figured that out by now. And I like to be able to go online and do everything online. I, like Rebecca said, I want to pay my Marchamo, which is the yearly insurance for your vehicle. I want to pay my rent, my electricity, my water. I want to pay everything online. And whenever you're paying your uh, rent and your electricity, it's usually going to be in the other person's name, which means you're transferring money from your account to their account, which you cannot do unless you have an online account. So do you have to have a bank, uh, uh, a Costa Rican bank account? No, you don't have to. No. In fact, if you want to pay your electricity and water and more chamo, all those things, you can just go to any little, any grocery store, pretty much. I don't but know it, about the more right? Yeah, yeah, you can pay you the You can pay the more at the, at the Not little... at every grocery store, but mm -hmm. I have paid it before at a grocery store that was set up, like the BMAs yeah, were and set up. Uh, to, some of the larger ones, right? right. They'll have a, at that time of the year, you know, in December, they'll have a little area um, in the grocery store set up with a person that is, um, accepting money from our chamos and printing out the main thing is printing out your decal your stamp uh, to put on your vehicle or your motorcycle that's right now you know uh, a question that just came up from doug that said hey you know he's he's experienced that there was a deposit limit of only fifteen hundred dollars okay and but you could get around that by getting a letter from your bank saying how much money uh is coming in and where's that money coming from mm -hmm. and so uh, you know, I can deposit pretty much as much as I want, but when I opened up my bank account, um, you know, I, I told them about how much I was going to be depositing. And, and so it really is going to depend from bank to bank. And the reason that is, is because Costa Rica has experienced a lot of money laundering issues. So they do put in a lot of things in place to try to stop all of that. So Doug, that is a very good point that you brought up and I'm glad that you did, okay? So those are things to keep in mind. And I've also experienced um, when depositing, they want to know what's the reason. Why, what are you, you know, where did you get this money from? What is it going towards? That's so right. just be prepared to answer that. And while I'm thinking of that with the banking, um, you have to have, as, as a gringo, you have to have your actual passport to even make a deposit into your checking account. Um, if you should go to the bank without your passport, you just seem to turn around and, you know, because they will not let you withdraw, make a deposit or anything without your passport. And um, just a tip, because uh, when we first got here, I was reading a lot uh, of things online and they would suggest carrying a copy of your passport with you instead of your actual, actual. passport, you know, keep your passport somewhere safe and carry a copy. Don't do that. It does not work. They, I, I've not had anybody accept a copy of my passport. They want the. They want to see passport. the passport. Okay. Yeah. In fact, they will check even at the bank. They will flip to the back or wherever and check to see when you last uh, stamped in and out. That's right. So it's important, you know, just as a rule of thumb, always, always have your passport with you. Okay. Because you're gonna run into troubles if you don't. Okay. Right. So, so now, if they want a bank account. A Costa Rican bank account. How do you go about getting that? Can you get that? Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, so there's rumor that if you're not a resident, you can't get a bank account. However, that may have been true in the past. It's not true now. So, uh, in the forum, we're going to place a link and we'll place more information in the forum to where you can click a link and you can actually open an account online with it's called the bank of costa rica uh if now don't quote me on this but i think there are actually four government ran banks uh i think there's bank of national bank of costa rica bank of popular and i don't know the other one that's why i said don't quote me <laughs> well and, and i thought only bank of costa rica was a national bank i thought um bank of national was a private bank 
Uh, I don't think so. Uh, but then there is uh, Coppola di Enza. What is it? I think that's how you say it. Anyway, I probably messed that up as I do a lot of Spanish words, okay? But Coppola di Enza is a very large privately owned bank, and you can open up a bank account there from my understanding, okay? However, what I was going back to is there is a link that we're gonna put inside the members area of, of the forum to where you can click on that link, open up a line, open up a, a Costa Rica bank account on online with the Bank of Costa Rica. Now, we haven't tried that before because we have already opened up a, an account, but we will do that in the next day or two just to see how easy that flow is. The thing to remember is that it is much, much, much more difficult using your online bank account than it is in the United States. They put in some huge, huge security precautions. And, uh, you know, when we do another video where I can share, insert videos and share things, we'll go more into detail on that. Right. They're big into um, Big, security. big security. They issue a little, I forgot what that little thing They is issue called. a little thing that, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's an <laughs> app so that you can put in this secret code every time you log in and it will time out quickly in two minutes yes. if you're not doing anything. So it is a lot more difficult to work online. Now, while I'm thinking about it, Let's say that you do open up a bank account and you finally get a Costa Rican debit card. Now, like I said earlier, at the ATM machines, you can put in your card and you have an option to choose English and Spanish. If you have a Costa Rican debit card and you put it in the ATM, you can forget it. You don't have an English option. They automatically assume if you got a Costa Rican bank account, then you surely must know enough Spanish. And I hate to admit it, but I don't. Now it's not that difficult to figure out which buttons after two or three times of pressing the wrong button, yeah. <laughs> what to do to, to withdraw money. And that may change in the future, but. <laughs> right. But an also a very interesting note, we're spoiled in the United States. Man, I go to the United States and I say I'm gonna deposit 500 bucks. I deposit 500 bucks in the ATM. In most cases, I have yet to find an ATM machine where I can actually deposit money. Have you? No. You know, so in most cases, you're not going to deposit money in an ATM machine, but you can withdraw money. So it's not a, a, a killer. Right. And while you're mentioning that, um, if you need to withdraw cash, you know, you want to get colonas or American dollars from your American bank account, it is much more cost effective to do it at the ATM rather than go inside and use... Um, the services of the teller. The, I think it, do you remember what the percentage was? Was it 13 percent? No, it wasn't nearly that high. I, mm -hmm. I want to say it was around 5 percent, but regardless, um, Costa Rica wants you to do everything on your own oh, yeah. if possible from the ATM. Yeah, 13 percent is the tax. Yeah. Um, the taxes that uh, the charge in most areas of Costa Rica. Okay, so, yeah. so uh, anyway, that's just a couple of interesting things about an ATM machine. You withdraw everything that you can from the ATM machine. I have gone inside to the teller when I wanted to withdraw like $2,000, but man, it costs a lot. So I just end up going over a certain amount of days to withdraw everything, and I save money. Now, um, okay, there are places that you can open up a bank account as a tourist, but what is the easiest way to open up a bank account in Costa Rica? What do you mean? Well, you can open up as a tourist, it's going to be challenging, it's going to be difficult, and the thing to, to know that you'll go into a bank account and you'll say that you want to open up a bank account and they're going to tell you that you can't. That, here's the thing to know. You can ask six different people, six different banks, get six different answers, and that's just the way it is in Costa Rica with a lot of things. Here's the easiest way to open up a bank account in Costa Rica. So if you're taking notes, take notes right now. The easiest way to open up a bank account in Costa Rica is to start your residency process. Once you start your residency process, that's how we open up our first bank account, and that was the Bank of Costa Rica. We started our residency process. Right, and while the residency process is not an easy process, opening a bank account once you have begun the process is easier. It's very easy, because then you started the residency process, you get this letter from the people that are doing that for you, you show it to the bank, they open it up, okay? So that's one easy way of doing it. Another super, super easy way to open up a bank account is by going to an honest 
attorney in Costa Rica and opening up a Costa Rican corporation, okay? That it's cost a, you what, about 500 to $1,000? That's right. Depending on the attorney you go to, it's gonna cost around 500 to $1,000 to open up a Costa Rican corporation. I didn't understand that at first, and I said, well, I have a corporation for my business in the United States. No, you can't use that. Open up a Costa Rican corporation, and like Rebecca said, 500 to $1,000, you go to the bank, you show them your corporation, bam, they can begin opening it up. Now, they're going to ask a lot of questions, and they may also require, like they did for me, to get like the last six months statements from my bank account, even a letter from my bank account, and how much money do you plan on depositing into the bank account? And by the way, where did that money come from? Um, they want to make sure that you're not laundering money and everything is on the up and up, okay? Right. So. And in fact, you have to agree um, when you open a bank account, sign paperwork that allows them to report all of your deposits um, over a certain amount to the, the United, United States. States. That's right, because the United States, you know, uh, doesn't want you hiding your money. And, uh, hey, I don't have millions to hide, so <laughs> I'm an open book. We're safe. <laughs> So anyway, the two easy ways to open up a bank account is to either start your residency process, which is, you know, uh, you can find people inside the form to help you with that, or to open up a, uh, a corporation. And inside the form, we'll post um, some names of attorneys that we respect and trust to open up a, a Costa Rican corporation. Right. And if I understood you correctly, if you're not planning to start your um, residency anytime soon or you're not needing a corporation for, to buy land or anything like that, if you're just coming on as a perpetual tourist type situation or just visiting for a few weeks and want to have a checking account, you can do that, right? You can go online and create an account. That's right. So not or every go into a bank. Right. Not account. every bank is and keep in mind, as a tourist, you're gonna have to jump into some hoops. Uh, the first person might tell you no, it's no way. You may have to ask to speak to a manager, assistant manager of the bank as a tourist, okay? Because it's just not the common practice. Uh, so Yeah, I just I don't find it necessary. No, uh, it is just not necessary for at all. A month, two months, you know. Even if you're going to stay here, let's say that you're planning on moving here. Well, hey, uh, go for a year, try it out. You might find out after a year that, you know what, it's just not your cup of tea, right. and that's okay. Every place I go, I'm able to use my debit card or credit card. And any place that doesn't accept it, there's usually an ATM around, or I usually carry that's right. enough cash to pay for a meal, you know, our meals or buy a, a little, some groceries. That's right. Now, before I forget, remember, as I said, always pay for everything in Kelowna's. And there's been a few times, Rebecca hasn't experienced it, but there's been times I've gone in and I've used my debit card, and they've asked, do you want to pay with this on cash on your debit card or Kelowna's? I always say every single time, Kelowna's. Kelowna's, Kelowna's, Kelowna's. There's a test at the end of this. When I say, how do you pay? You pay everything in Kelowna's. It makes it simple. They do take U.S. money, but it's always going to save you money by paying Kelowna's. And many times you'll save money by paying cash instead of, and when I say cash, Kelowna's, instead of your debit card. Saves them money, saves you money. Right. Okay, so we're like at a half hour. Do you want to talk a little bit about our experiences? Um, at the bank, or do we have any, any Yeah, matter of fact, because we still got a few minutes. We're at a half an hour, but we do have to stop at 145 to start the Q&A to where we'll answer all of your questions at the Q&A. So just as a quick reminder, because we got lots of people watching right now. And like I said earlier, we're going to shut it down shortly here within the next five or ten minutes, but we will go live immediately on the Q&A to answer your questions. And we do that just so that people uh, will watch the replay, okay? Now, real quick, Rebecca, we got a bank account. Finally, what is the thing that you like the most about banking in Costa Rica? Well, what I like the most about Costa Rican banks is that they have a special, um, they give special favor to the elderly, um, anyone who's disabled, uh, a pregnant person, they allow them to Cut ahead. the line. Yeah, to cut the line. They have a, um, an area that other people also use, but 
if an elderly person goes, goes into the bank, they go straight to that line and they are waited on ahead of everybody else. Anyone, you know, a disability or whatever. And, and I, I think that's really, and that's kind of the attitude of Costa, of Costa Rica that yeah. I really like. They yeah. take care. They, they take care of their elderly, their elderly don't they? Yeah. You know, and you know that's important to note. Most banks will have a designated line for the elderly, the pregnant, the disabled. However, if there's nobody there, other people are using it. Just know that you might be up next, and if there's three elderly people that came in, they're going ahead of you, and that's great, okay? Because they do believe in taking care of pregnant, elderly, and disabled people. That's a that's a great plus. Now. Uh, and it's important to know that the lines in Costa Rica can be very, very long, okay? Which brings me to the next thing. What is it you don't like the most about banking in Costa Rica? Right, the, well, the lines can be uh, very long, and I suppose the musical chairs is what I dislike the most. Musical chairs. Now, you're going to have to tell me because I played musical chairs <laughs> as a child, and that was the only thing I could win at. Well, I call it musical chairs because I don't know how to explain it, but... Everybody is in, they'll have like, some some eggs have like 60 chairs lined up. I counted one time, I sat in 31 different chairs before I got my turn. So it's like, everybody is, sit, is seated, and when they call a person to go up and be waited on, then the, everybody gets up and moves one chair over, and one chair over, and, until you reach the first chair. And, you know, I don't and, know what to say about that, but it's not all banks. Most and, of the banks have um, a number system. You know, you walk pick in, a number. pick a number, and sometimes they'll have um, numbers for different areas of the bank. That's, that's a good tip because I didn't know that at first. If you're going in to make a deposit or withdrawal, they call that the caja. They'll have, you know, you pick a number for the caja. They have a separate section that is like if you're needing to open a new a, bank account yeah, open an account or you having a problem with logging in or whatever a uh, loan they have a separate little number deal so you don't want to i did that one time i pulled from the wrong thing and waited a long That's time right. just to get my number called and then they say oh you need to go to that line over there get another number yeah so um you know that's <laughs> Most, most places have the number system. You know, there's a lot of places that play musical chairs, and uh, for my personality, it's maddening. I don't understand it, but hey, it is what it is. In, in fact, I found that if they run out of the numbers, like even the places that have the, the little number system, if they run out of the little number stickers, and I guess they haven't gotten any in yet, or nobody's replaced them yet, then they play musical chairs until the number system is back into play so that's like, right so you know the thing is you go into the bank look and see if they have a place to pull a number and if they don't well you're going to be playing musical chairs right. and so anyway it and is kind of comical yeah. but and it's just the way it is and what you hear you kind of learn which banks are really really busy and what times of the month they're really busy um for example in paris Dome, the downtown bank that is uh, popular with the street traffic, you know, over by the bus station. I don't even go there anymore because That's right. it's always a long line for the ATM, long line inside the bank to do anything. So I drive a few. How many miles do you think it is to? Yeah, the, we drive probably about five miles down the road to the other branch. Yeah, and it's kind of on the outskirts of town, and um, you can get waited on fairly quickly there. A lot quicker there. Yeah. Okay. And there's a lot more parking. <laughs> but you know, a thing to keep in mind is, like you said the other day. You know, um, before you go in, there is a policeman or a security guard at the door. And he is going to scan you. He's going to look inside your purse or your man bag and make sure that you don't have a, a weapon in there. Okay. Right. So, hey. Uh, yeah, that's just customary. All the banks do that. They have a, a, um, a police, an armed guard at the door. The door is pretty much locked behind you when you, when you go in. And um, most of the time you're waiting outside. You know, especially with the quarantine situation, um, they let you wait outside and then let just a, you know, however many people are allotted on That's the right. inside. And they will check, you know, they'll ask you to check your purse, um, look in it, and they, right now, though, because of the quarantine, everybody, the mask requirements, they'll ask you to remove your mask, look at the camera, yeah. so the camera can get a good shot of your face. That's right. So, so you know, they're, they're big into security. They are very big like into that. security, which is good, right? You feel safe in the bank. <laughs>
And, uh, and of course, they're not gonna let you wear sunglasses. They're not gonna let you wear your helmet. Uh, they're not gonna let you wear a hat. Uh, and Doug just brought that up. Thank you very much, Doug, for that reminder. Oh, that's uh, right. You know, another thing, now, a couple, only a couple of years ago. Right, and are you going? Go away? there. <laughs> <laughs> when we first got here, up until about three or four years ago, I guess, um, when we first got here, the bank would not let you have your phone or your tablet or anything on while you were inside of the bank. And I just found that so strange, but um, they would not let you take, you know, somebody wanted to take a picture or anything like that that's prohibited. You know, they had signs on the door, you know, don't, cannot take photos inside the bank. But it's, it's changed here now. And now you're sitting there sometimes 30 minutes. The other day I waited an hour before I got waited on. And it's very nice to be able to get on your tablet, you know, That's do a right. little bit of like check your grocery list, just check Facebook, whatever you've got to do. So it's important to note that, like Rebecca said, when we say it's a long time to get waited on in the bank, she said an hour, okay? Uh, hey, look, in, in, in America, we're spoiled. You know, you, you not wait more than five or ten minutes, but hey, things do take longer here, yeah. and it's okay. And of course, it, I was paying the Marchamo, so that took a little bit, that took longer, because yeah. everybody was trying to pay their Marchamo. Because if, if you wait till after the deadline of the 31st, there's a little interest fee, uh, a little penalty fee for paying it after the 31st, and also you can't pay it at the bank. That's right. Uh, once it's late. Once it's late, you got to go to the INS office to pay it. Right. So, uh, okay, so uh, we're getting close to where I'm going to have to shut down, and there's lots of just, I mean, amazing, great questions here that there's no way I can answer right now. But, so here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. We're going to shut this down here in just a few minutes, and then at 1.45, we're going to start a new Q&A live and we'll answer every single one of those questions at that Q&A live, which means you're gonna have to retype your question at that live so that I can be sure to answer those questions. Because guys, y'all have got some great information and a lot of great questions here that I wanna be sure to answer at our next live session, okay? So, uh, before we end this, uh, is there anything else about our banking experience? Remember, everything we share with you. We're not saying we're right, we're saying that's our perspective based on our experience of being in Costa Rica since, two, since November of 2013. We have seen a lot of changes, a lot of growth mm -hmm. since we've been here. Yes. Costa Rica is getting better and better all the time. And while there's some things that drive me mad, I absolutely love being in Costa Rica. And uh, Costa Ricans, Ticos are some of the friendliest people you'll ever get to meet and very helpful to a fault, okay? Which means that instead of saying they don't know, they're gonna try everything they can to tell you the answer, even if they don't know the answer, because they wanna be helpful, okay? Yeah, so, I really love Costa Rica. Yeah, we really, you know, no matter where you live in the world, there's gonna be things you don't like, but the pros far outweigh the cons. Right. And you know, it's the poor Vita attitude. You just gotta have a good attitude about it. You know, I see a lot of people, and, and I'll meet a lot of people at the bank. That's the time you just, you make the best of it. You just visit. You know, That's you, right. You, you see, see everybody. <laughs> 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 All right, with that said, I think that is everything about the experiences of banking in Costa Rica. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down, but I want to make sure that you go to the next slide, which is going to happen at 145, okay? Actually, and it's 245 Eastern. It's 245 Eastern time, but it is 145 Costa Rican time, okay? And you can always go to our YouTube channel and look in the community post. There is a link that will take you to that live, okay, which is the Q&A. So, with that said, hey, remember, if you haven't ever met us before, I'm Alan. That's my beautiful co-host, Rebecca. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can know every time we post a new video. We greatly appreciate you. Make sure that you join our free forum at forum.cloudforestchapel.com so that you can get you know, meet other people that are doing the same thing that you're doing, finding out information, getting prepared to move to Costa Rica. Right. And in the forum, don't be afraid to start a conversation with somebody or just ask a question. That's right. Okay, we're going to see you in just a few minutes on our q and uh, about banking in Costa Rica. Yeah, how do
do I stop it?